For well over a century, the Veterans of Foreign Wars has carried the torch for veterans. Every year, every battle, fighting for what veterans have earned, for justice, for remembrance, for community, for country. The VFW remains a beacon of hope and strength through our nation's darkest hours. Over time, issues and hardships for veterans have taken different shapes, but one thing remains the same, the enduring support found in the VFW, America's largest and most established organization of combat veterans. The VFW has served countless generations, and today, its programs and services remain stronger than ever. But how and why did the great organization come to be? In 1898, the Spanish-American War raging in the Philippines and Cuba came to an end. Veterans returned to America, many of them ravaged by diseases and horrifically wounded. Yet they were forgotten by the country they served, sent back with only their discharge pay of $15.60. Small groups of veterans began assembling in posts, demanding change. A country that creates veterans should be prepared to care for them. Veterans soon realized by banding together, one mighty group could be more powerful to fight their injustices. And on August 1st, 1914, this group became the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States. At the same time, World War I began, and soon after, 4.7 million Americans answered the call to fight. Back home, Women joined forces to support their country, founding the VFW Ladies Auxiliary, raising funds for troops, and sending care packages overseas. While at war, service members lobbied for insurance benefits. And to assist returning veterans with obtaining their benefits, the Veterans Service Office in Washington, D.C. was established in 1919, making the VFW the first veterans organization to maintain a permanent location in our nation's capital. Many battles were to come. The 1920s brought a time of remembrance for lives lost in World War I. The VFW Buddy Poppy found its roots during World War I when Canadian Lieutenant Colonel John McRae penned the poem In Flanders Fields after being inspired by a moment when he looked out over a field of soldiers' graves. The only color in contrast of the sorrowful white crosses was the red of the poppies, set in honor of the lives sacrificed. In 1922, the VFW adopted the buddy poppy as its official flower to symbolize the ultimate sacrifice made by those who defended our country. The VFW began distributing its Buddy Poppy just before Memorial Day in 1922. And since then, poppies continue to be hand-assembled by disabled veterans and are widely distributed on Memorial Day and other patriotic holidays to commemorate our veterans lost in battle. Well after World War I had ended, our veterans were still fighting to find jobs. Military families and widowed and orphaned children were left desperately struggling. To combat these issues, the VFW became involved in several veteran hiring initiatives nationwide. In the Detroit area alone, more than 9,000 veterans were employed as a result of a cooperative project with members of the local community. Further, a local millionaire cattleman learned of the VFW's work and donated 472 acres of his land near Eaton Rapids, Michigan. The idea to use the land to house military widows and families was born. And in March of 1925, a recent widow and her six children entered the VFW National Home for Children as its first residence. At this time, active duty military personnel were paid $30 a month. The VFW strongly backed a proposed bonus for World War I veterans that was passed by Congress, despite a presidential veto by Calvin Coolidge. This was a step in the right direction, but there was a problem. The 20-year paid-up endowment could not be touched when veterans needed it most. 
Near the same time, the VFW stood by families in distress from natural disasters, gifting $10,000 to Mississippi Valley flood victims in 1927, keeping the tradition of lifting up our nation in the most challenging times. The VFW then surpassed expectations by acting as a private corporation to negotiate with Russia in a difficult political climate to bring back the remains of 86 Americans during the Polar Bear Expedition. As the stock market crashed in 1929 and the Great Depression devastated the country, veterans demanded their 20-year endowment be paid out, yet Congress ignored them. The 30s were marked with setbacks, but also many triumphs. The VFW helped to create what is now the single largest integrated healthcare network in the country. The Department of Veterans Affairs, a major victory not just for the VFW, but for all of America's veterans. The VFW granted its first $300 scholarship to a Boy Scout, introducing supportive education that would multiply throughout the decades to follow. After putting in three years toward the collection of five million signatures, the Star-Spangled Banner was passed as the national anthem in 1931, a major victory. The VFW was growing larger and stronger and proudly set its headquarters in Kansas City, making it centrally located to the veterans it serves. But a shadow loomed over service members and veterans who still received little support from their country. In 1932, veterans in the Bonus Army and the VFW marched for their World War I cash bonus, but faced rejection. The VFW-led Bonus Army charged through difficult protests as active duty servicemen used force to push veterans and their families out of sit-ins and marches for justice. Roosevelt took office and requested Congress cut budgets, hitting veterans and their pensions hard. The VFW fiercely organized and finally won the World War I cash endowment fight in 1936, even after the president's veto. As a result, some $2.4 billion were issued in bonus bonds to World War I veterans. The VFW then succeeded in their aim to have November 11th established as Veterans Day ensuring a federal holiday to celebrate and honor the sacrifices of those who serve. VFW membership continued to grow, nearing 200,000 veterans of World War I and the conflicts before. Then, a new generation of veteran was born. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The population of veterans grew dramatically with 16 million Americans in uniform to fight the imperative fight of World War II. However, VA hospitals weren't equipped to handle their medical needs. The VFW began their campaign for improved VA hospitals. $5 million in mustering out pay from Congress and the best piece of legislation for veterans to date. On June 22, 1944, the President signed the VFW-supported Servicemen's Readjustment Act, also known as the GI Bill of Rights. Designed to assist veterans of World War II, the GI Bill set up new hospitals, granted low-interest mortgages, and paid for veterans to attend school to achieve a civilian career to support themselves. When veterans finally returned home after defeating the Axis powers in 1945, they were welcomed with better benefits and a plan to restart their lives. Membership soared to over 1.5 million. The VFW celebrated 50 years of advocating for veterans, ensuring their fair benefits, educational goals, and good health. The event garnered participation from many celebrities and high-profile individuals like Bob Hope, President Truman, Dinah Shore, and 1949 Buddy Poppy girl, Janice Page. After the strife of the early to mid-40s, 
Americans hoped for peace and stability as the 50s began. However, the decade started with the Korean War, a war that was forgotten as quickly as it began. The VFW, however, did not forget. VFW posts across the nation rolled up their sleeves, hosting blood drives to get the desperately needed supply to the battle injured, and successfully advocated for an emergency measure granting Korean War veterans with medical benefits, VA home loans, and extended GI Bill benefits. Ever supportive of Americans in times of floods, fires, and other natural disasters, the VFW began a cooperative disaster relief plan with the Red Cross. President Truman joined the VFW, adding to a presidential membership list to date of Theodore Roosevelt, Dwight Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, and George H.W. Bush. In another monumental move to strengthen patriotism and communities, the VFW became the sole sponsor of the Voice of Democracy program, an annual high school audio essay competition designed to make America's youth explore their patriotism and the significance of living in a democratic society. After two years of construction, VFW member and President Dwight D. Eisenhower officially opened the new VFW Washington office in 1960, further strengthening the VFW's powerful influence on legislation. In 1964, the VFW Ladies Auxiliary contributed nearly $100,000 to earthquake victims in Anchorage, Alaska, as they suffered from the second largest earthquake to ever be recorded. A new war was soon waged, and another generation was asked to answer our country's call. The courage and resolve of Vietnam veterans and military officials was brutally tried. This generation of war veterans would face a backlash like never before the VFW sprang into action with a barrage of initiatives to combat the negative treatment our Vietnam veterans received to include the Support the Boys in Vietnam campaign and Operation Boost, resulting in hundreds of mayoral proclamations and even more media announcements calling on citizens to rally around the troops. The VFW asked Congress to pass a law and make it illegal to desecrate the United States flag. They were successful. VFW posts across the country mobilized to send care packages overseas, host parades for those returning, and provide support to the families left behind. The VFW demanded assessment of the Institute's failing veterans. VA hospitals were exposed at unacceptable standards for medical care. While the number of veterans increased by 8 million between the beginning of the 60s and end of the 70s, the amount of hospital beds in VA facilities had decreased nine VFW national commanders would visit the troops during the war. In 1973, the Vietnam War came to an end, and the VFW asked for careful accounting of those Americans who did not return. The Vietnam War also proved to have lasting effects. Exposure to Agent Orange chemicals ravaged veterans' health. Fourteen medical conditions were connected to Agent Orange including several types of cancer, respiratory disorders, heart disease, and PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. The first service member to file for veterans' disability on account of PTSD was denied several times, but an appeal by the VFW called for benefits for veterans who suffered from PTSD as well as Agent Orange examinations. Thanks to the VFW's grassroots write-in campaign, in June 1984, the Vietnam Veterans Dioxin Radiation Exposure Compensation Standards Act passed the Senate. Furthermore, the VFW's 10-year struggle for compensation for death or injury as a result from Agent Orange came to resolution in 1989. Membership surpassed 2 million. POW and MIA initiatives became a top VFW priority. Some 2,600 service members had still not been returned from Vietnam. 8,000 were still missing from Korea, and well over 70,000 still unaccounted for from World War II. Today, the VFW remains the only major veteran service organization to travel overseas annually in support of our government's full accounting mission. Updates were again needed for the GI Bill. 
the VFW called for increases to the allowances given for educational purposes and allowed members of the National Guard and Reserves to benefit from it for the first time. Proudly, the Montgomery GI Bill was passed. The spirit of philanthropy and remembrance was alive and well as the VFW pledged strong support to the Vietnam Memorial, Vietnam Women's Memorial, Korean War Memorial, and the Statue of Liberty Restoration Fund. And the VFW Ladies Auxiliary was incredibly prominent throughout the decade, auxiliary membership reaching 750,000. As the VFW reached its 10th decade, another major victory was achieved service connection for specific conditions caused by Agent Orange. When the Gulf War began in 1990, the VFW wasted no time in showing its support. VFW members tied countless yellow ribbons in communities across the nation, keeping our men and women serving in the Gulf at the forefront of America's mind. It launched campaigns like Operation Hometown, where VFW representatives traveled to Saudi Arabia to distribute 100,000 care packages to troops, and Operation Homecoming, a troop support rally, drawing some 75,000 service members and civilians. The VFW had the backs of those deployed to Somalia, sending gifts from home to ensure their morale remained high, and welcoming home those who participated in Operation Restore Hope with an annual membership. Just two years later, the VFW again brought a piece of home to those called to Bosnia, this time to include thousands of Christmas cards. During times of deployment, the VFW wanted servicemen and women to not only receive a package of care, but to remain as connected as possible to their loved ones. As such, in 1996, Operation Uplink was founded, a program providing free phone calls back home to relieve the struggles of being apart. By this time, VFW youth scholarships soared to over $2.5 million. The VFW celebrated the passage of several pieces of supported legislation. The Buddy Poppy celebrated its 75th anniversary. The VFW set forth a new military assistance program aimed to boost morale by hosting service members and their families at farewell and welcome home events. And relief funds to those stricken by natural disasters had reached a half a million dollars. A worldwide celebration ensued as the VFW celebrated its 100th birthday. The VFW had developed into a multifaceted, global powerhouse for service members, veterans and their families during its first century, but its resolve would soon be tested. On September 11, 2001, an unfathomable attack occurred on American soil as planes crashed into the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and a remote field in Pennsylvania. 55 known veterans and military and thousands of civilians lost their lives. America was under attack and immediately the VFW leapt into preparations to support those who would become America's newest, greatest generation of war veterans, those deployed to the Middle East to fight Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. The VFW facilitated the Adopt-A-Unit program, providing many Operation Uplink cards, audiobooks, and support messages to deployed troops. The VFW also distributed $120,000 equally among families of active duty personnel killed in the 9-11 attacks. The VFW developed an outreach network to set veterans up for success before they were done with military life. Through this pre-discharge program, men and women could file claims prior to separation from the military, ensuring timely, accurate benefits to start the course of financial stability. In another push for financial security, the VFW Unmet Needs Program was born in 2004. The program provides financial grants to service members and their families who faced unexpected financial difficulties as a result of deployment or other hardships related to military service. Unmet Needs grants help cover basic life needs such as mortgages and rent, home and auto repairs, insurance, utilities, food, and clothing. 
In August of 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama with the worst natural disaster trauma felt in years. The VFW pitched in, finding displaced veterans shelter and providing toll-free helplines. The VFW donated $750,000 to assist with rebuilding the devastated areas after Katrina and later Hurricane Rita. In other distressing news, groups of extremists began picketing funerals of fallen troops from Afghanistan and Iraq. The disrespectful act not only toward the men and women who dedicated their lives to fighting after 9-11, but also their grieving families would not be tolerated by the VFW. The VFW was successful in advocating for the passage of the Respect for America's Fallen Heroes Act, which banned protesters from military funerals. The VFW National Home for Children welcomed more families and expanded services to enable them to thrive and stay strong together. After years of evolution, the home now provided a wealth of support services for families, education and tutoring, daycare, food, healthcare, clothing, recreation, and dedicated case managers for guidance to reach family goals. In 2008, after a decade of determined advocacy to improve educational benefits for America's newest generation of war veterans, the VFW celebrated the signing of the post-9-11 GI Bill. The VFW's long-fought quest to ensure our nation's best have access to first-class education was a major milestone for both the VFW and for veterans. The VFW also guarded health of families through the family caregiver legislation, catalyzing its passage to law. This greatly expanded support programs for family caregivers of post 9-11 veterans. A new decade brought with it several new opportunities for the VFW to support many worthy causes. $648,000 were donated to the construction of the Vietnam Veterans Education Center, $500,000 to the National Museum of the U.S. Army, and $20,000 sent to assist service members with family in Haiti after their devastating earthquake. The war in Iraq was declared over, but we still had troops in the field, and challenges for veterans remained ever-present. An alarming number of veterans were unemployed, 165,000 Vietnam, 199,000 Cold War, 135,000 Persian Gulf War, and 211,000 Iraq and Afghanistan. The VFW strongly urged for swift passage of the Vow to Hire Heroes Act to expand programs and relieve these high unemployment rates. After a nationwide crisis in confidence and access to care, the VFW stepped in, driving the Veterans Access, Choice, and Accountability Act of 2014. The VFW National Commander called on Congress, pass a bill or don't come back from recess. Veterans continue to wait, the system remains broken, and very few employees who are responsible for this nationwide crisis in care and confidence have been held accountable. In response, the President signed the bill into law, providing the VA with an additional $15 billion in emergency funding to make sure veterans would not be forced to wait months for care. The VA started hiring more physicians, nurses, and clerical staff, and increased space to regain veterans' trust. In 2015, the Ladies' Auxiliary changed its operation model to reflect today's military family by changing its eligibility requirements and dropping ladies from its name. Now, men and women of the auxiliary would work alongside VFW members to distribute millions in monetary aid for veterans and volunteer nine million hours annually in VA medical centers and communities across the globe. In 2016, the VFW brought new national attention to another key issue, veterans' mental health. Through the nationwide and ongoing VFW mental wellness campaign, the VFW reminds veterans they're not alone and works to combat the stigma of mental illness among our nation's defenders. The VFW remained close by to assist with veterans' most pressing needs. 2017 saw a record year in VFW Unmet Needs grants. 
Over $2 million in financial assistance grants were given to nearly 900 military and veterans' families. In comparison, the previous year gifted $550,000 to 184 families. The VFW has contributed nearly $10 million to memorials recognizing the service and sacrifice of veterans from World War I through Desert Storm. And we are supportive of the new Global War on Terrorism Memorial to recognize almost 3 million Americans who have shouldered the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and elsewhere. In 2017, the Forever GI Bill was passed, improving on the post-9-11 GI Bill. This bill had an unparalleled impact on America's service members, veterans, and their families by expanding coverage to Purple Heart recipients who didn't have the requisite years of active service, veterans who attended schools which closed abruptly, involuntarily activated reservists and guards members and surviving family members. The 2017 Forever GI Bill also eliminated the 15-year use or lose limitation. Now veterans have a lifetime to use their GI Bill benefits. From its humble beginnings, the VFW has demanded change and fought for improved quality of life for veterans, service members, and their families after war in every way. Now, well into its second century of service to others, the VFW remains a pillar of support in communities around the world and a guiding example to America's youth. The VFW propels our country's military personnel forward and stands by with a close watch on legislation that affects them. The VFW unites a nation and today remains stronger and more relevant than ever to every American who has put on the uniform of our great nation. Creating change is tough work, but no one is more prepared to work harder to make change happen than the VFW. When the next issue arises for those who have fought for this country's freedom, the VFW will continue to fight alongside them like we have since our inception, because no one does more for veterans.